Today we're going to talk about using Data Abstract for JavaScript to develop Metro applications for Windows 8. The Windows 8 platform is still running on a Windows kernel services, but the application layer is split into two parts. We have the existing applications, the desktop applications, that can be developed with C Sharp, VB, or Oxygen for .NET for managed applications that will be running on .NET Framework or Silverlight. We have unmanaged applications that could be developed with C, C++, Delphi, etc. And all of those are running on the Windows 32 SDK that's been with us forever. And then we have HTML and JavaScript applications. These are web applications that are running inside the browser. But what's new in Windows 8 and what everybody's most excited about is the Metro style apps. Now these are the apps that can be sold through the Windows Store, which is a great opportunity if you consider how many people are going to be using Windows 8 and to have your app in there for sale or just for easy distribution. Now Metro style apps don't run on the .NET framework or Win32. Instead, they run on the new Windows runtime. Now the Windows runtime is essentially a a new version of the .NET framework except it's no longer managed and they do that to make it accessible to unmanaged application development. So on the Metro style apps you can have your view developed with XAML which was previously used in Silverlight or WPF or you can use HTML and cascading style sheets. Then your model controller or the program logic itself is developed with either JavaScript for HTML and cascading style sheet or if you're using XAML then you have your choice of C, C++ for unmanaged Metro applications or you can use C Sharp, VB, or Oxygen for .NET to develop managed Metro applications. So one of the things that's significant about Windows 8 is JavaScript with HTML and Cascading Style Sheet has been elevated to a first class tool for developing Metro style applications. So it's equal in the way it's treated in the Windows Store to C, C++, C Sharp, VB, or Oxygen. All of these languages are now on an even playing field. They all run on the Windows runtime. Here at Rome Object Software, we have tools and libraries available pretty much across the board here. You, we have existing support on desktop applications, both managed, unmanaged, and web applications, as well as support in building Metro-based C Sharp, VB, or Oxygen managed Metro applications using XAML. And thanks to our new JavaScript client libraries, we have support for building JavaScript-based HTML and cascading style sheet Metro applications. So the only place you we don't have support yet is the C and C++, the unmanaged Metro applications. We've really got you covered anywhere you're going to want to go besides that one corner. But today I want to talk with you specifically about HTML and Cascading Style Sheets applications built with JavaScript and using Data Abstract for JavaScript. Like I said before, these applications are going to be first class Metro applications on the Windows 8 platform that can be available in the Windows Store. I'm running the latest developer build of Data Abstract here, and that is where the Metro functionality is available. This functionality will be in the next beta build of Data Abstract, as well as in future releases. And then a final version of the Metro support will be available once Windows 8 ships. The Data Abstract for JavaScript libraries actually will be available as a free download as well, so you can use this without having a current Data Abstract license. But until that time, the beta versions of Data Abstract are available to all current Data Abstract subscribers. Now I'm running Data Abstract inside Visual Studio 11 beta, which is running on Windows 8 Consumer Preview Edition. In order to do Metro development, you have to be running in Windows 8. And the reason is, is because the Windows runtime is only available inside Windows 8. Not to worry though, the Consumer Preview of Windows 8 and Windows 11 Beta are both available as free downloads from Microsoft. So you can go out and download this today and get started. I'm going to go ahead and create a new project. By default, JavaScript is under the Other Languages category inside Visual Studio's New Project dialog. You can configure this differently, but if you haven't, this is where you're going to find it at. So we're going to go ahead and create a Metro application here which launches our wizard. This wizard is going to prompt us to decide which kind of server we're connecting to. I have my PC Trade sample server running here, so I'm going to go ahead and choose client from an existing custom data abstract server. You could also use relativity instead. It's going to assume the local target URL, which is what I want to use. Now our sample server is set up to simulate requiring a login. 
in order to simulate what's going to most likely be a scenario in a production environment. It just requires that you have a login string and that the username and password match. So I'm just going to put an X in there. And it's gone out connected to our middle tier and got all of the tables that are available. So we can select all those tables or I'm just going to go ahead and just pick just the orders table. And then of course we have the option to choose which data streamer we want to use. The bin2 data streamer is more efficient than the JSON data streamer, but you could also use the JSON data streamer if you'd rather use that. And it's created our Metro application for us. Now we could run it at this point, but it wouldn't do anything because we haven't actually enabled that. So let's go ahead and show you what you need to do here. The two files you need to edit for first of all is the default HTML, which provides the view or the user interface for our application. And then the default JS, which is the JavaScript file, which provides all the functionality of our application. Now, if we look in here, we see that it's gone through and it's creating our channel message service, login service and adapter for us and set this all up based on the target URL we provided during the wizard. Also here is the code to handle the login functionality. So we could change this username and password or prompt the user or get it from some other data storage. Down here, it has a orders table, which is based on the orders table that we selected. And this data table is what's actually going to hold the data that comes down from the server. In here is the rows I need to comment out in order to get the three rows of data from the server and display it to the user. Now this is going to display the data in this table orders table, which we need to come back over here to the default HTML and uncomment these rows here so that that data table is available. Now we can run this and we'll have our data displayed in our Metro application. The splash screen can be changed and here we go. Here's our data that's come up in our Metro application. Easiest way to get back to Visual Studio, upper corner, click, and we're back in Visual Studio. Let's go ahead and add another table in here just so we can walk through the whole process. So we're going to call this table details. And in here we just need to add another data table to hold that data in. And then down here, we're going to use the adapter to get the data. So there's three create request info options here. The default one is create info, which is what I'm going to use right now. But the create info version six is actually where you can use the DA SQL to get very creative and very powerful there. So be sure and check that out. We're going to get the schema information. And we're going to go ahead and get 10 records on this one. No filter, no parameters. The next two parameters to the get data func method is actually a function for on success and on error. So this is what's going to happen once it successfully gets the data back from the middle tier. So I'm going to pass a function here in line. And then we have the on error, which we're going to use the till function here of show error. So it was much simpler to call the util function for show error. So what you're probably going to want to do is create a utility function in your application that does this functionality of showing the HTML table. And that way you can remove the duplication here that you see on these two calls and make your code a lot more concise and easier to maintain. But for the purposes of this demo, this is simple enough. So now we can go ahead and run our application and we will see the data coming down from it. In this case, it's already running. So we hit restart. We're back in our Metro application with the two tables there. And one thing I'm going to show you here that's really kind of slick is you can grab this Metro application and stick it to the side here. And then if I click back over to Visual Studio, I have Visual Studio and my Metro application visible at the same time. So if I had some controls on here that I was interacting with and I needed to debug that, while I was developing it, that's a great way to do, to do that. I hope you've enjoyed this very short introduction to using Data Abstract for JavaScript to develop a Metro application for Windows 8.